Todd Shelley here. And we're out in the backyard looking at the uh, leaning tree with the branch broken off from the last storm and the pile of bramble. And uh, I've, I've tried about three or four times to do this with me actually in front of the camera, but it just doesn't work. If, if I get more than five or six feet away from the camera, uh, with the camera's internal mic, you just cannot hear me. And I've tried two or three kludge together wired microphones of different types and even with the with those uh, I'm, my voice is barely audible so uh, we'll have to put up with the intro without me in it which may or may not be a good thing anyway um, this pile of bramble and the leaning tree back behind it will be gone here in about two to three weeks I, uh, I contacted Jones Tree Service. Uh, they came out yesterday, Friday, uh, to give me an estimate, and uh, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised. Uh, the guy said it would be 1200 bucks to cut that up and haul it and all the bramble away. So uh, while that's still quite a pretty good chunk of change, it's not nearly what I was expecting to have to pay. Um, Frankly, it's uh, my insurance deductible is uh, <clears throat> is fifteen hundred bucks, so uh, it doesn't even meet the deductible. So uh, I'll just pay it and uh, get rid of all of this crap and be done with it. But uh, anyway, uh, since I'm not out here, or since I'm not in front of the camera, I'm out here obviously. Since I'm not in front of the camera, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back inside. Where, uh, where you can hear me halfway decently and uh, go over some of the other goodies, uh, other things that, uh, that we have to talk about. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on here. So without further ado, back inside we go. Rod Shelley here. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. Uh, I'm going to have to get some kind of a shotgun mic or something for this, uh, this camera if I'm going to keep doing this because <clears throat> this distance, it's semi-audible, um, but outside there, if I'm further than five or six feet away, forget it. But <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as, as I can. I try to keep these under 10 minutes, but uh, this one might go just a wee bit longer. Uh, anyway, uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of things going on here. Uh, one of them, you can see the delightful and lovely Miss G4 back here. And of course, by the time you see this, this will already be posted on Renderosity. Uh, what I am doing, <coughs> and it's, it's been a while since I've done this, is these poor girls have been out there swimming in the sewage and getting shot at by weird creatures and having all kinds of strange things happen to them. And they haven't had any new makeups or anything for years. So <clears throat> basically what I'm doing is creating some new makeups for uh, G4 and R and uh, most likely some of the other girls too. I've got, uh, got a lot of other things in the, uh, in the pipeline. <clears throat> so, that's what's going on. I have, uh, like I said, it's been a while since I've done that and I've been drawing myself all these nice little charts and, you know, little, little things trying to, uh, trying to get all of my materials together in one spot. For instance, on G4, uh, if I look at, use Poser File Editor and go in and look at the material references, you know, it's referencing some one of the skins in, in the run times, which is where it should go, and then another one, it's, uh, oh, for instance, this one up here, it's referencing something on that drive up there, which, uh, <clears throat> 
basically I linked another mat to her, to her skin, or to her, that lives on that drive up there on top. And uh, <clears throat> it works okay when you're on this computer, but if I want to open this file up over on that computer, then it's referencing these and it's referencing that drive, which of course doesn't exist over there. So uh, I have to go in and find the, uh, the materials I use. And what I'm trying to do is get this all into one runtime so that uh, it'll work here, it'll work there, it'll work over there, it'll work whatever, wherever, uh, you know, as long as those particular files are present. And uh, I, I do want to correct one thing I said on one of my earlier things about Poser looking on a certain drive path for uh, certain things, like for instance Betty or G4 or whatever. It doesn't. It looks at the runtime. It doesn't care what drive it's on, just as long as it can find the runtime and everything's in the runtime, then it finds it and everything's peachy keen and hunky dory. So <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing this. This is a little bit meter chart that I made some time ago when I was first, uh, I made some uh, different map files for uh, one, of the, one of the dresses that the girls like to wear. And uh, <clears throat> so now I'm, I'm getting back into this for uh, you know, for the Millennium Four figures here in these in these days of Genesis Eight, uh, eventually I'll get this stuff figured out on Daz Studio. I mean, I can already change skins or change dress textures or whatever in Daz Studio. It's not that much different from uh, Poser, although it doesn't have a uh, material room like Poser does. But it's basically the same process. You know, you go in and find a JPEG that works for, uh, say, her dress, and uh, pick that. Uh, the part I haven't quite got figured out yet is how to uh, <clears throat> how to make that into a character or into a, a file. I can just click on and bring it right into Data Studio. But that'll come along with uh, more experience playing with it. But anyway. That's one of the things I'm doing. <clears throat> and as I said earlier, I'm, uh, I'm creating some new makeups for, uh, for G4 and for R and uh, some of the other girls. And I've got one in process here for G4. And uh, anyway, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've, uh, I'd like, I want to get Oh, at least maybe 10 or 12 different different makeups. Some of them would be a little bit wild. Some of them will be pretty subdued. Um, but it's it's kind of fun getting back into this, and I will be doing more so after I retire and have more time to work on this kind of fun stuff. Uh, again, I'm getting getting kind of excited about all these things again. And now we're over in the uh, in the other corner, and in the uh, in the little uh, time lapse, you saw me stringing cables and all kinds of good stuff that I've got coming over here. Uh, this is the computer that used to be over on the other side of the room. This is my basically my music studio, uh, my old Windows XP computer. It was actually my dad's computer. And uh, he gave it to me. Gave it to me a few months before he passed. Well, actually, no, he gave it to me a few months before he went to the nursing home, which he was there for several months before he passed away. But uh, anyway, this is this is his old computer, and uh, it still works relatively well. Like I say, it's Windows XP, so I can't do anything real fancy on it. But it does, you know, it'll rip a CD in. A minute or less, and uh, it handles uh, handles a lot of the music stuff pretty well. And also, it's good for uh, I've got this Ion VCR to PC, which came with its own software. Basically, just a video 
VHS video player that goes right into your computer, or into my computer, <coughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's obviously, it's great for uh, digitizing old VHS stuff, and I've got a ton of stuff over there. I've got a whole bunch of Three Stooges tapes and, uh, you know, other, other stuff, things that I taped off a of cable and one thing and another that, uh, you know, movies that I don't necessarily need on, on DVD or Blu-ray. Uh, I can just put them on regular, uh, regular MP4 files or whatever. But uh, anyway, that works well for that. And then, of course, I can digitize music from uh, LPs or uh, cassettes. I've got another VCR up there. So uh, that's this end of the room. And, of course, last but not least, this is, uh, <clears throat> I use my, use this computer to put together these videos, the behind-the-scenes videos. This is my machine with DAZ on it. <clears throat> and uh, I've got this little table I made and a Bluetooth keyboard because <sighs> when I did all that moving around, there was a speaker right up here. And, uh, of course, being at something here, the speaker, instead of just staying where it's supposed to, had to fall. Fell right on here. And knocked my eye key off. So, there. So, there's a nice little blue spot there where the eye key used to be, and I know those laptop keep, keep Blech. Okay, let's stop and do this again. I know that laptop key tops are will snap on and snap off, and they've got a little thing in here that you can clip them onto, but unfortunately when the speaker fell on that, it broke it. So, anyway, I got this little uh, Logitech Bluetooth keyboard from uh, uh, Dave, one of the guys I work with. Uh, had one. He said, I don't use it. These things go for about 40 bucks at Micro Center. He gave it to me for 20 and it works great. So uh, I've got this little table I built just to keep the keyboard up. You can slide it back like this and then I've got my Intuos that I can, uh, I can use. And when I'm not using that, I can slide this forward and use the keyboard. So, anywho. So uh, anyway, I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. This has probably gone over 10 minutes. Um, <coughs> I've got, let's see, next week, Monday, I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm off Friday. I have surgery for my gallbladder on surgery. Uh, on surgery. Boy, oh boy, I need surgery on my mouth to where it'll work right. I wonder if Dr. Chu can fix that. I'm having surgery for my gallbladder uh, on Friday. And uh, they tell me I'll have to spend the night in the hospital. Dr. Chu likes to keep his gallbladder patients overnight just to make sure, uh, you know, you don't have any alien chest bursters or anything like that. So uh, uh, that, that kind of sucks, but... Uh, you, you do not get a good night's sleep in the hospital. I've spent one night in my entire life in a hospital, and I think, <laughs> I think I got two hours of sleep. Finally, I got to sleep just long enough for the surgeon or the doctor to come in and wake me up. Say, all right, you're going home. I'm like, oh, good. So anyway, I will be in, probably be coming home a week from today on Saturday. And uh, after that, I've got a week of vacation. So... Uh, Hopefully I can get some stuff done. But uh, for now, I'm going to wind this up and uh, get this thing uh, put together and posted on YouTube. And I'm uh, going to look into some other fun things that are going to be happening very soon. So uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>